Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, obviously, we're here to uh, talk about the uh, uh, Coach Goff not being the, the head men's baseball coach anymore here at the University of Alabama. These are not easy uh, for the coaches, their families, the, the program. Um, not something we take lightly at all. Uh, I'd like to thank Coach Goff and his staff for their contributions over the past year and wish them well in their future endeavors. Uh, a lot of success Coach Goff has had over the years as a baseball coach, and I know he'll have success in the future as well. Uh, we felt this was the best decision going forward for our baseball program, and that's why we made the decision. These are, you look at these situations when it comes to coaches, and you decide what is the best long-term solution for the program, not based off of a season. Uh, or anything like that. It's based off of the long-term health of the program. Um, as we move forward and look ahead, we're looking for the best possible baseball coach that we can get. Uh, with college experience, that could be a head coach, that could be an assistant coach. Uh, but we want somebody that's been in college baseball and understands the dynamics of that. There have been several assistant coaches that I just want to give you examples of who have gone on to be head coaches at high-level programs for their first job. Andy over at Mississippi State, uh, Kevin O'Sullivan, who went from Clemson to Florida uh, to be the head coach for the first time, Brian O'Connor, Notre Dame to Virginia, Dan McConnell, Little Miss to Louisville. Don't read too much into that, just trying to give you some examples. Uh, we are absolutely looking at head coaches, but we'll also consider assistant coaches. We want to find the best possible college baseball coach that we can for the University of Alabama. A couple things going forward as well. I think it's really important as a program, as a university, as a fan base, whoever our next coach is, that we're patient through the process. We have to have stability in our, in our coaching staffs going forward. That's very important. This was very unique, but this is important going forward that we have that in mind in what we do. Coaches are going to make decisions that sometimes aren't going to be popular to everybody that aren't going to be popular to the team, that aren't going to be popular to the fan bases, to the families, and that's okay. There will be some of that involved, and we need to be patient through those processes as well. We have a lot of desirable resources here at the University of Alabama, including the incredible stadium, our budget, we fund our baseball program at a very high level, and the Alabama brand that I believe gives all of our teams an opportunity to recruit nationally for us to have the best opportunity for success. People want to be at Alabama. This is a great, special place, and we're all fortunate in our athletics department to be a part of that. We're going to have Terry Rooney from our staff. He is going to serve as the interim head coach during this time to provide the leadership to our team. And he'll be in that role until we name a new replacement. Last thing I'd like to say is, as we go through this search, and no offense to anybody I'm in front of right here. Y'all like to speculate and, and talk about who the candidates are going to be. I'm going to tell the people that we talk to that if according to sources that they have interviewed, according to sources they're now the leading candidate or anything like that, I'm just going to assume they don't want the job. It's important that we manage this process in an effective manner to give us the best opportunity to hire the best baseball coach that we can at the University of Alabama. And that will be our focus going forward. And so I ask the fans as they go through this too, take what you read out there with a grain of salt and don't assume that what you, what you see is necessarily 100% accurate. There's often more to the story and what takes place. No disrespect again to every, anybody I'm in front of right now. You all have tough jobs to do and we respect that very much. So I wanted to throw that in as well. I think that helps us manage our process and what we do. We may not be 100% successful at it, but we're going to give it our best shot. Questions? Greg, as far as the uh, financial obligations, financial liabilities of this, has that been set you know, for Coach Goff and for any assistants that have a, a contract that's, that's uh, been terminated? Has all that been worked out yet? You... Pretty much, Cecil, it's a good question. Um, we are uh, dismissing Coach Goff uh, without cause, and that is effective immediately. And so the base salary and his contract, uh, which uh, uh, we will be responsible for for the remaining four years, there is mitigation in there. If he 
takes another baseball job. Uh, the assistants were on year-to-year -year contracts. We're going to uh, uh, do some things just to try to help them out over these next couple months. Uh, but uh, I think that's important for them so they can try to have some protection through these. Obviously, something that's very challenging as, as you go through these situations. How far does this set the program back anytime you have a new coach? Or we're going to lose a recruiting class. How how detrimental is this to the program? Well, I think that's part of why we're keeping Coach Rooney involved in, in, in the process right now, to try to stabilize the recruiting process or this class as much as we possibly can. Uh, long term, the goal is whoever the next coach is, hopefully to be here for many, many years and give us stability in, in what we do. I think that's a very important facet for us to have long term success as a baseball program. And uh, that will be the goal in our hiring process to find somebody that gives us a great opportunity to do that. Uh, when ultimately did you arrive at the decision and how did you arrive at the decision? Ultimately, uh, last night, went to bed to sleep on it a little bit. As you can imagine, didn't get a lot of shut eye. And, uh, and Coach Goff and I met this morning and I informed him of the news. You say without cause, but what, what was what was your reasoning for deciding that, that this was the time to do it? Obviously, there's been some complaints from, from alumni and fans and stuff that you've heard, and you've said you've heard some of that. What, what was your reasoning behind this? Alex, really, you just look at the overall evaluation of the program. Again, going back to what is the right thing for the long-term health of the program. We felt the right thing for the long-term health of the program is where we are today. And that's a constant evaluation. And, uh, uh, and that's what we were focused on throughout. Greg, was the was there a quote unquote final straw with all the meetings with the players and things? Was that kind of the nail in the coffin? A and part B of that question: What characteristics are you looking for in a coach specifically? Yeah, I don't want to get into specific uh, meetings or incidents of any kind, uh, but we we continue to evaluate just as as we did throughout the season, as we ended the season, and then we went into the last couple of days and uh, felt this was the right decision for the long-term health of the program. Um, as far as what we're looking for, we're looking for a really good college baseball coach that, that can coach the game of baseball, that can recruit, has a, a very solid recruiting plan, uh, that understands academics, that understands compliance, uh, that understands community engagement, involvement, uh, alumni involvement. That's really important. I want to say that to our alums out there. We want we want you engaged and involved with the program. And so a head coach that has a plan across the board for those things, uh, that's what we'll be looking for. Going back to talking about stability for the program, will Coach Rooney be considered as one of the candidates for the job full time? Or Well, I don't want to get into any specific candidates, but I can tell you uh, there weren't any discussions about that with him uh, when we talked about him being the uh, interim head coach. We're really appreciative of the fact of his willingness to do this. And he should be commended for it. You've been in other parts of the country. You certainly know the challenges that coaching here in Alabama and some of the uh, things a coach might be up against. Does that make this less attractive a job? I mean, in your experience? No, I, I, the reality is Every single place you go has, has its strengths and its, and its challenges. There are a lot of strengths at the University of Alabama, and we're going to be very focused on what those strengths are to give us the best opportunity to succeed at the highest levels in college baseball. We've, we compete at the highest level in many of our sports, and that, our goal will, to do that, will that to be the case across the board. And, uh, and I think with the passion of our fan base, with the incredible resources we have here as a program, especially our, our beautiful stadium, um, that has a leg up. I mean, I've been to, I think I've been to all the spring training homes in, in Arizona. Uh, I've been to a lot of minor league ballparks. Um, it does, uh, our stadium does not take a back seat to anybody. And that's important in recruiting. And uh, are there challenges you have? Absolutely. But we need, to, we need to be as aggressive as we can with the resources we have to work with to give us a chance to win. And uh, this is a great place to be. And I know there'll be a lot of coaches that'll be interested in that. Brought up compliance. What, were there any rule violations or anything that took place uh, from uh, Greg Goff or the coaching staff that expedited this? There were no rule viol there. There were no rules violations. Hey, Greg. Again, um, 
I assume you're going to draw on your experience at Mississippi State. What will you draw on from that as they've had continued excellence over years, coach to coach to coach, that you saw that you'll try to implement? Well, I think you look at a lot of the fundamentals of what they do. Uh, obviously, Coach Polk was a legend there. And then when we hired Coach Cohen, uh, and now I know with Andy being there, he's, he's doing a good job. I, I know they got a win today in the tournament. Uh, you look at that foundation, it's, it, there's, some, there's some fundamentals when it comes to you know, tackling and blo blocking that you got to have. You got to recruit very strongly. Uh, when you have opportunities to be out there recruiting, you have to do that. You have to show a strong commitment to academics. You have to keep it in between the lines from a compliance standpoint uh, and, and understand that, manage that. You have to be able to coach the game at the highest levels and, and develop the young men in your program to give them the best opportunity to succeed here while at Alabama and then put them in the best possible position that they can pursue their dreams uh, from a professional baseball standpoint beyond Alabama as well. Understanding not everybody will do that, but that you have that as a program, as your reputation, that you can go out and do that and then compete for championships and what takes place. Greg, either before you came to the decision or today, did you meet with the players on the current team and what was their response to, to your decision? Uh, we met with the uh, team members who were in town today at 1 p.m. And, uh, you know, they, they uh, unfortunately have done this a few times. And uh, it's usually a similar response. It's, you know, there's look, looks of concerns. Uh, and I hope, I hope they would be concerned. You're talking again about people's careers and their families and everything that goes into that. And we got a bunch of good young men on our team. And, uh, and I told them we'll go out and get them the best baseball coach that we can. Greg, because this is your first hire uh, here at Alabama, is, are there some common characteristics of coaches you've hired in the past? You know, I think I've one of the things in the in the coaches that I've hired that you've seen have have success. They're usually very smart, and and they are extremely driven, but they also have a lot of self awareness to them. Um, they can relate to eighteen to twenty two year old young men and young women too. Um, you know, I, there's something that. I also find with the really successful coaches, they're usually really good listeners. And uh, I, I've been in a few interviews with coaches, and they, they're interrupting you constantly. And I look, Regina's here, and she's, she, uh, I'll tell you a little secret here. Uh, Regina comes in at the end to meet the wife, the spouse, if there is one, and uh, gives me the two cents there. And I don't think uh, we've hired a coach that is constantly interrupting you during, during the interview process. And so, um, but it's a lot of those factors. And, and there's good information out there. We're going to look at academic records. Obviously, performance on the field is, is important. We're going to look at it from a compliance standpoint, do all the background checks that we're supposed to do. And there's analytics out there that are now that can be very valuable as you go through it. At the end of the day, so much of it's just been on instinct and, and what we feel will be the right fit. And you, know, you don't always bat 1,000, but the goal is to bat 1,000. Will there be any sort of um, minimum qualifications that you're looking for, like, say, SEC experience? And do you have any idea of how fast you want this process to, to go? Well, it's a good, good question, Chris. We, we uh, obviously, a lot of teams are playing right now. And we, just like if we had a assistant coach or, you know, hopefully head coaches come here and they want to stay here and finish their career, uh, that we're going to need to be respectful of the seasons they're involved with right now. Uh, and so I'm not going to put any time frames on this other than say it could take a while depending on what takes place with that. That's why it was really important that we put Coach Rooney in place to manage the team currently today and then to help us with uh, from a recruiting standpoint. And so, uh, you know, baseball season is going to go a while longer now. So I would not be concerned if we, you know, a week from now we haven't announced who the new head coaches. Uh, so it could be a very wide range of times. Just for the record, the players that are here currently on scholarship have the option, their choice, whether they want to come back on, on scholarship? They, the, the young men on our baseball team who have a scholarship, those scholarships will be honored. Because uh, you've presided over successful baseball programs at other universities, do you think you're uniquely positioned to make this hire? And uh, how excited are you about the opportunity to kind of have your fingerprint on the program in that sense. As far as the, the last part, of, 
not very excited at all because obviously anytime you go through these these are very challenging situations for everybody involved and and if, and if you don't have great empathy for the coaches and their families um, then boy I, you know I, I that, that would be that would be challenging uh, as far as you know you, what you do and, and and when you go through these things and that's part of what I said at the as I at the, at the end of my statement was don't believe everything that's out there and so in order to get somebody to come to Alabama they got to want to come to Alabama and we may find the the right fit at the right time that's ready to come here we're going to do our best to do that but sometimes you may think well ex coach boy they need to be the head coach at Alabama or whatever school it is but it's not going to happen for a lot of different reasons it may be because their family doesn't want to move it may be because uh, there's something of an issue that we we know about that maybe isn't public whatever that may be as we're doing our research so what I promise is that we're going to go find the very best baseball coach that fits at Alabama that wants to be at Alabama and is a good long-term solution for us to give us the best opportunity to succeed at the highest levels Greg, to kind of re-ask Chris's question, as far as uh, experience that you'd want to hire, um, you mentioned Andy Canzaro a bunch. He came from major league scouting to get into college coaching before he was never a head coach. Right. Would you be willing to look at someone either without Power 5 experience or someone in the major league realm right now that's a scout? I want somebody with strong college experience, not necessarily on what – I don't want to define that because I think it could, that I want to keep it broad as a statement. But uh, – I think it's important. I, I've talked to, I've talked to, just let's say sports where people have come from the professional ranks, and you know when you when you talk about the game itself and the coaching itself, they're usually really good because they coach at the highest levels in the professional ranks. But then when you start talking about academics, compliance, you know, from a from a community engagement standpoint, recruiting, big part, sometimes they're going to struggle with that because they don't have that experience. And so I think it's important to have in the college environment, not necessarily has to be your entire staff, but at least a strong collegiate influence on what you do. I think that's really important. All right, thanks everybody.